there is some very famous scammers that are here. Oh, oh, wasn't enough. More. Give me more of this, I am. He's just throwing cans at people. I don't know if you could say anything then, but it just looks like a full dungeon. This is the spot that tourists are most harassed and robbed. Hey, how are ya? How are ya? Hello. I'm Spanian. I was raised in the housing areas of Sydney City. Spent most of my youth and adult life in prison. And after a total of 13 years, I'm free and living my best life. And I'm out and about flying around, sussing out the hoods all over the world. It's owed. We're back into the hoods. We're in Barcelona. My motel's right behind me. There's a place here, the most dangerous part of Barcelona. It's called El Reval. El Reval. This place, be straight out with you, it's not the most dangerous in Europe. It's probably not even in the top five most dangerous in Europe. But there's something specific about this place that differs to all the other hoods in Europe. And I've seen people talking about this from around Europe. For some reason, nearly all the crime here, and it has a high crime rate, all the crime, all the criminals in this hood target tourists. This is not like a place where they're in the hood having gang wars, killing each other. It's a place where there's just a whole bunch of people who stab, rob, put knives to people's throats, and they're targeting tourists. And it's been happening for a long time, which isn't a good thing for me. <laughs> You know, like so sometimes like you can go to a place and it's like, yeah, they're in the middle of a gang war and everyone's killing each other and you can walk around with a GoPro and a backpack and they look at you like, who's this idiot? But when you go into a place where they specifically target tourists and you're walking around with a GoPro and a backpack, they're like, ah, oh, look at this idiot. <laughs> anyway, that's what we're doing. So my motel was there, like I said, in that street behind us in the Gothic Quarter. We're in right in downtown. Right down there is the water. We're, in, we're smack bang in the middle of Barcelona, right? Look at this beautiful church. Look at that. El Rural is only one precinct that way, right? So it's only 1.1 kilometers from my motel. So fortunately, we can just walk there. So let's enjoy some of the beauty along the way, shall we? I can see up here, there is some very famous scammers that are here. There's women and they paint their faces white. They're right here. If you can see behind me, there's women, two women with their faces painted white. And what they do is they go up and photobomb people or offer to take, you know, like people need a photo. They offer to take your photo for you and um, get really aggressive really really aggressive and follow people and demand more money and demand more money let's go suss them out oh look it's happening now She thought she was going to get a free, a free photo bomb. <laughs> Luke, coughing up money. Look, look, it wasn't enough. More. Give me more of this, I am. More. Look, 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 look. look. <laughs> well, they, at least they let her go. They follow people around. They take people to ATMs and they're like, more, more, more. Sort of along the lines of what I was saying before, um, 
I've had have had thoughts about looking like the way I look, right? And doing what I'm trying to do here and achieving what we're trying to achieve. I'm taller than nearly every single person I walk past. I'm 110 kilos full of tattoos, right? And I look like somebody that's been in jail. How does that affect this? Does it make it better or worse? I'll tell you what it does. I can understand. There's situations it'll be better and situations it'll be worse. In terms of places that are low level crime or low level thieves and opportunistic people, much like where we're going now actually, I feel like looking like how I look is beneficial because you're not out to prove a point, you're just out to get paid, you know what I mean? So, you know, you know, I've been there, I've done that, right? There's some things that are just not worth your money. <laughs> And then there's situations where there's hoods where looking like me, no matter if I'm trying to present as a tourist, I lost tourists, this and that, a lot of people, they'd find that like, look at this idiot, what the f is he doing here? What's he trying to prove? I could be walking around casually smiling like any tourist, but looking how I look, it's like they have to prove a point. This bloke thinks he can just walk through here. You get what I mean? So. In a lot of situations, it's gonna make it a whole lot worse. There's nothing we can do about that. I'm stuck looking the way I look. And yes, let's get on with it. But I think, you know, in t for today, it'll make it better. What a church, eh? All right, what we're coming up to here, I just seen the map up, up ahead here, is um, a big strip, big main road that separates the two districts. You'll see it in a second. It's actually busy as here, more busy. We're going straight across into that lane. I want a coffee. Coffee is my confidence. You know, people have beers and alcohol. Coffee, mate. Overdose on caffeine, you can walk through any wood in the world. All right, right at the entrance of the lane that I said we'll walk down is a coffee store and it looks beautiful. It looks like a work of art. It legitimately is a work of art. Wow. Can you order from just here? I think you can. Can I order here? Oh, maybe you can't. <laughs> Would have been so much better if you could order from there, but you can't, you got to order inside. Okay, Americano, take away, please. Yeah, please, yeah. Just going off basic aesthetics, it does look a lot more graffitied up here instantly. And I'm not gonna lie, it smells like poo. And I just look to the right, you'll see them in a sec. The first corner I get to, I see like four homeless people. It's only coming to them in a sec, so it's not red hot. But I'm not, <laughs> but I'm not just targeting them. I'll pretend I'm looking at other things and then we'll turn to them. Or like, I'm not gonna lie, you cross the street and it's, 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 it's not a different world, but it's different, it's different.
starting to sprinkle a lot heavier. Borderline raining. Straight out at this point, it's getting visually worse. I haven't really seen a change in the people, the demeanor of the people around here. Um, except for the homeless people, obviously that was different. First homeless people I've seen in a day and a half here. But the buildings, the aesthetics of the place is definitely changing here. This does this looks like a street that at night if you were female or defenseless you wouldn't come down. If you're wondering what time it is, it's about 6 p.m. The reason I chose this time is that obviously we want to get later on in the Arvo towards the night is when most people <laughs> come out. <laughs> but you got to understand I'm filming on a handheld device. I'm filming on a little GoPro. Say hello. See? There we are. That's us. That's you. You know, look how small you are. So these little GoPro handheld devices, the DJI Action, or much like a mobile phone, you can't film at night time. It would be unwatchable video quality. Low light, they're horrible. In the middle of the day, beautiful. Even afternoon, so this is why I've chosen this time. But it's not like I'm here in the middle of the day or six in the, nine in the morning or some stupid time. I sort of got a vibe here that I'm in the middle of like hood housing. I don't know why, I just have that vibe here. I can see by the lad there, there's another lad up here. Looks like, looks like a little hoodlum are coming up to him. And I can just feel, I can hear, I don't know if you can hear the sort of Spanish hip hop based music semi. It's got that vibe. Like there's a very nice Porsche sitting right here. It's not that great box star, but still. You know what the beautiful thing about this camera? It's so wide that I can point towards another direction and still capture people. See how he was on the side of the road there? But because it's so wide, I'm pointing the camera at these bikes and I'm looking, I'm looking at the bikes and pointing the camera at the bikes, knowing I'm capturing him. Because you gotta understand like, <laughs> as tough as you think you may be doing this, you can't, it doesn't matter how scary people are or even if it's an old lady, you can't just walk up to people and just like, point the camera at them, they'll be like, bro, what the fuck, do you know what I mean? So if you're wondering why, when I walk past people, I sort of shimmy it offline, because they're there. All right, vibes full different here. Demeanor, appearance, feeling, like I said, like I said last episode, I am, a great judge of these things growing up where I grew up. I get the feeling, I know, I know the feeling. 13 years in prison yards. I know when things are tense are not so tense or extremely tense. It's not tense here at all, but it's definitely two notches up from where we started. This place here, this is the first point I pinned on the map. See this courtyard here? There were two places in El Raval specifically that were pinpointed on either side of each other. One in the south, which is where we are, and one right over on the other side in the north. We're going to walk through the whole middle of it. It's not that far, it's maybe a 20 minute walk, but this was the first point when I typed in where specifically in El Raval to avoid, whatever, this was the first point. So it's supposed to be like a park open area. And this is where a large amount of the happenings happen. Right, I'm trying to not be sus. <laughs> 
feel like I've got a million people looking at me. Bro, this is a different world. They were not lying. I'm pretty sure these are prostitutes here. I read something about this area having all prostitutes. And I don't want to be judgmental, but they look a little bit prostitute to me. <laughs> All right, I feel like I'm gonna get robbed going up this lane, but here we go. I feel like I'm gonna get robbed going up this lane by Les Oge. <laughs> smells like Yandy hard. <laughs> I'm using this to watch my back. I can see myself, <laughs> I can see my back. <laughs> There was definitely, let's be real here, a bunch of drug dealers and prostitutes just then. All of them staring at me very, not aggressively, like interested. <laughs> interested is the word. This is not as fun as this all eats. <laughs> If you're wondering why I have a backpack, do I want to carry goods around? Hoods? Do I want to carry goods in the hoods? No, I don't. But unfortunately, see the drone shot that you've all seen at the intro? I shoot that drone. I fly a $3,000 drone in my backpack. And if I don't carry the drone with me, you just don't get that drone shot and I have to use some bodgy generic you know drone footage for 16 dollars that i buy and it's not specific enough to the hoods we're going to so it's either i don't give you drone footage i like the drone footage i find the, the bird's eye view the situational view of it it puts where it is into perspective so it's either i don't give you that footage or i walk around the hoods with a three thousand dollar drone in my backpack making me a target but it is what it is who cares they take it, I buy another drone, you just don't get the drone footage. Oh, there's a whole bunch of hoodlums here behind me on the right. I'm sure you can see them right now. And coming up ahead of me. I'm trying to ride up this lane where they're all standing. I feel like one was swearing at me, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Can't you just hear tones? Sort of heard a direct, directed voice. Tito, Tito, Tito. Whatever the f he was saying. Say it to my face, can I? <laughs> like I said, in this specific circumstance, looking the way I look is helping. But yeah, I can definitely think a lot of times where it's not gonna. Let's go down here. I feel like I'm walking in, in there, in their back lanes, like in the front of their houses, all the lads down on these streets. That's what I'm doing right now. I can tell. I've seen some lads in the lane that I walked past back here on the left. I want to walk up it. Every time I see a sketchier and sketchier lane, I'm turning into it. I'm just, I'm just going off sketchiness. So I've seen this lane, so we're being distracted again. <laughs> this is gonna get me in trouble. 
Oh, okay, it's not that bad. This is a sketch lane though. To me, all the lads that I'm seeing in these lanes on the streets, all these sketchy looking lads, to me, they don't appear to be Spanish. They appear to me to be somewhere between Arab and North African. That's how I feel. They're like, a, like Libyan or something, Moroccan. That's how I feel they all look. Well, actually, maybe like 10% African and 90% that, yeah. This is my judgment. They don't look Spanish to me. Looks like, um, like, a, like a full immigrated culture. Well, I guess, look, Hussein Electronics. It, it, I'm pretty sure I'm correct. It is like an Arab area or a North African area. Yeah, look, Arabic writing. Everything has a, like a sub-Arabic writing to it. This intersection is so cool. There's two cop cars down there with police, as you've seen. But they don't look like they're doing anything interesting. I've seen two of them looking at a scooter, so... For something interesting, there was an arrest. There was an apprehension. We could go down there and... I feel like I'm gonna get pickpocketed. Don't pickpocket with my, my drone. Pickpocket the whole drone. <laughs> Apparently, Europe's best pickpocketers are here. That's the allegation. We got nothing to pickpocket though, I'm wearing a backpack. Bro, down there, you sketch. Oh, the coppers are gone. There's some lads here looking at me behind me, and so I want to sort of hang around. I want to sort of try to make people say something. Well, I don't want them. I don't want them to do anything. But I just want them to like. I want to see how they treat people. So I was gonna walk down that lane, but then I seen them. Like looking at me like with sort of angry eyes, I look back for a second and say, yeah, I just want to see where this leads. No, they stop, they stop caring. Let's go back down this lane. These, these flats are ghetto. These are full traps. These are full OG European traps right now. Even the local church is shut down.
Let's hit a line. Hey, how are you, brother? That's the first person that, like, said hello to me or smiled. He went like this. This is what he done to me. He went, like, like my clothes. I don't think it's my clothes. And they're pretty generic. He went like, and then like smiled, like pointed at my body. I don't know. Sounds, so no more I talk about it. The sus of this is getting. Let's get out of here. Like, I want to get into flats, houses, but it's in such a way that you can't. It's not like big blocks of flats, you know? It's like they're all like this, like little entrances. I think they must have just been doing like a call out. They just came out of some apartment. I bet you I know what they're doing. They're either doing checks on people on house arrest, going door to door to check that they're still there. Yeah, like house arrest or bail checks. All right, I'm completely wrong. They're talking to victims there who are investigating a crime right now. So there's three people, look like tourists, giving reports and they just came out. So they were, something would have happened, they would have said, yeah, and they ran, in, ran up here. <laughs> and they're going door to door sussing out. Unresolvable. Bruh, that lane looks hood as, bro. You know, it's visually worse than I thought. Like, I'm, I'm legit two streets away in the motel. It is beautiful. Can I tell you, mate, Barcelona, it is like... I don't know how to explain it. Like, I've been to a, 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 a few cities. It has the architecture almost of Paris with sort of like the coloring and the vibe of Madrid or Lisbon. Uh, it's just crazy. And then there's beaches. It's like all of that, but it has beaches. And I'll tell you one thing, not around here. <laughs> around here, it's all like <laughs> Tunisian convenience stores, but two streets away has the best, coolest stores I've ever seen. It's just such a cool, cool city. But so the reason I'm saying that is I did not expect for El Raval to look this bad. I thought, yeah, it'd just be like anywhere else. And they got pickpockets and robbers and we'll see if we can find, we see someone. It's honestly what I thought, you know? Like I said, it's definitely not in the top five most dangerous cities in Europe. It's just very interesting that such a suburb can exist in a beautiful, well-off city like Barcelona and the anomaly that they specifically target tourists. All right, we'll go down here. Don't bother. It's another friendly guy. You know what I want? I love that. Don't bother. I want, I want a kebab. I want a kebab. I've gone past a couple kebab stores. Let's do a kebab review in El Raval. I feel like the cleaning of graffiti is not really a thing. You know, so, but having said that, some of the concrete looks like it's had it off. But any type of door or anything that it, that it gets graffiti on, it looks like it's been there. Like that's been there since 2012, that piece. <laughs> it's to the point where the dust is cleaning it off. The dust is going over it, making it a blank surface again.
a Filipino store. I noticed a few Filipinos here, not a lot, but it did surprise me. Philippines being on the other side of the earth, but then I thought about the Filipino Spanish connection. You know, throughout history, and you know, maybe Filipinos immigrated here. Because a lot of them speak Spanish already, don't they? Well, just as I said that, I'm pretty sure they're Filipino. <laughs> police come in here I'm just gonna look around curiously like I'm a lost lost little puppy so they don't like uh, inter interrogate me not that they will but I just done the generic like oh I'm so innocent just looking around <laughs> it's just an instinct right <laughs> I wish I could. I want to get in behind the locked it. I wish you could see up there. See, they're so secure. They're so secure. Wait, wait till he goes. Do you see what I mean? They're so secure. We can't walk in them. And like when the person walks out, they're not gonna like. Next one, I'm just gonna try to like walk through. I don't know. But in there looks like you won't be able to see anything, but. I don't know if you could see anything there, but it just looks like a full dungeon, if that's what it looks like in their staircases. Holy. It's like a dark dungeon, didn't even have lights. I'm gonna get bashed on that one day. <laughs> Sticking the GoPro over doors. <laughs> one day, two lads are there just doing bizzo, and they're just gonna look up and be like, what the f? <laughs> I could just imagine me back in the days, <laughs> 20 years ago, doing my thing in a staircase, whatever. And I look up at the gap, and it's just little fucking camera. I just be like, who's getting stabbed? <laughs> Oh, bro, that was so ghetto. <laughs> I don't know if you got to see that. I tried to do throw-offs like I was recording up there. I tried to throw off like, because it's the family. But I just wanted to see, I just wanted you to see in there. Look like they're tunnels to an Egyptian tomb. <laughs> what is that? Oh, kebabs. Dona kebab amigo. We're getting a kebab here? Bocatas de so. No, no. I want kebab. I said we're getting a kebab, so we're getting a kebab. Dona kebab. Beautiful. 
Let's go. I'm hungry. Hey, how are you? Soge. Four euros. That's good. Six US dollars, whatever, seven dollars fifty Australian. That's good for a kebab. Mate, kebabs in Sydney nowadays, thirteen dollars. Kebabs are literally half price here. We'll see how it tastes. So I'll start at Yahoo and before we know how it tastes. Nice four euro kebab. I hope this tastes good. You know, like I do a food show, you know, like if you've seen my YouTube channel and it goes right off and I am a bit of a kebab connoisseur. And I'm gonna tell you, I'll be honest with you, from my, the appearance of the preparation in the store, I'm expecting it to taste like absolute rubbish, but we'll see, hopefully I'm surprised. It's a different bread. It's a type of bread like a sage bread. Nah, it's not a sage. It's not, what am I talking about? It's not lead bread. It's almost like a tortilla. Like a Spanish tortilla. Wow. That's interesting. Mixed kebab. They put the minuscule amount of cheese. Doesn't even count. Cabbage, lettuce. You put olives on there. Three different sauces. It's all right. It's all right. There's aioli on there. Aioli, not garlic sauce. That white sauce is aioli, not a garlic aioli. It's like a real creamy based aioli. No, it's okay. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Five out of 10. Anyway, enough of that. I'm starving too. <laughs> We're almost at this second point of interest. It's just left and then it's apparently just behind this building. I just wanted to come through this way. All right, I recognize this. I recognize this. This is through the investigations that my producers have done um, into picking the specific areas I go, this is the spot that tourists are most harassed and robbed. This is the, this is the, the basketball courts of the hood. It's actually starting to rain pretty bad and unfortunately would be a big deterrence to a lot of people being out. You can imagine if a lot more, imagine if it wasn't raining, there'd be a lot more hoodlums cruising around. They're spinning out, why is he recording? I feel like this is smack bang. It is. Have a look around me. Like, okay, there's not a lot of people out, but you can imagine. You can imagine. Me hey, looking at me, why is he filming? Just greet him with a big smile. And they just like, they don't like it. They look away. No smiles around here, mate. You're in the middle of a revival. Angry faces only. 
You can see though from here, this place would be. There's some shit going on behind me. I just seen, maybe that's why they're looking at me. Right behind me, like squatted down under that tree. Let me have another look for myself. I'm not gonna point the camera at it just like that. I'll make a judgment, right? I'll see how dangerous that all looks before I point the camera at it. Um, it looks moderately dangerous the way they're looking at me. Um, I'll walk, I'll try and walk past it. See if they say something. So what happened just then is I walked past, it looked like an African bloke and like three Filipinos. And they were like squatted down under a tree and they were, they were like looking halfway between nervous and aggressive. So I didn't, they were all looking at me. There was a push bike there, they were kneeling on the floor like sort of like, you know, sitting like squatted down and they were preparing or doing something between them as if something was going on and they were trying to stay out of the rain. And then there's people here that are jumping the fence um, into whatever that is behind me and they're jumping the fence in and out like they're going from those lads, all right? They're t doing something, then they're leaving and jumping that fence and they're all like over that side of the fence sort of looking at me and they're going back and forth between those people on the outside of the fence and that's what's happening there. Obviously, dealing is happening. Oh, far out. You ain't got to be from. You ain't got to be Spaniard or from jail to know that. It's like, what's going on? <laughs> Ask your six-year-old kid. They're selling drugs. <laughs> no matter what, in the middle of it all, it's just beautiful architecture. Eh? Beautiful domes. As I was doing that dome throw off, I looked back down and I was like two lads like, all right mate, fuck off with your camera. <laughs> Get the fuck out of your YouTube. <laughs> you know, there's a balance, bro. You know what I mean? Like, we're doing a hood walkthrough, fuck. Like, we're not getting in people's faces. Like, what are you doing on the floor there? Can you show my quarter of a million subscribers, please? <laughs> You know, and like here, look, I'm not gonna lie, I feel my safety, I feel, I feel, I feel sweet, I feel sweet. You know, I can imagine most people not feeling sweet. I feel sweet here. I feel like I can just lay snap kicks and start laying them all out. That's how I feel here. But there's a lot of places, but I, I wouldn't be like that. Like, I wouldn't be like that. At the end of the day, there's a lot of places that I'm not gonna be able to be like that. I'll fucking die. <laughs> So it should be one one rule, one size fits all, you know? Can't be a tough guy in some areas and then be a little cat in another. So I just gotta take one approach and just be really friendly and safe, right? There's definitely up there behind me, whole bunch of that going on. Up there behind me on that side, they look like I don't know. I don't know what they look like. If they were waiting for something or if they were part of something, it's hard to tell. But there behind me definitely is the most hood hood of the hood hood. That is the, the, the hood of Barcelona. Let's do a few more of these streets.
All right, I'm circling my way back to where we started. And I think after that, we've fully encompassed El Raval. Someone just spotted me on a push bike and acted real sus. Throwing off now, like as an excuse to get in the flats. I think it's, I don't know if he lives in here or he might live on the third floor, the fourth floor. I'm not quite sure, but I think it's here. It's here. Even the lady was sketch on me then. And there was a person in a wheelchair like blocking the door. I didn't know that. So I just bailed out of that one. I don't know what was going on there. All right, it's a lot later now. I think it gets dark in about 40 minutes. So we're pushing it as much as we can. Hey! <laughs> We're pushing it as much as we can with the time. Um. Someone translate that for me. <laughs> Someone translate that in the comments. Hands at people. He's just throwing cans at people. Boom. All right, brother. Oh, that was the sketch lane. All right, it's almost dark down that lane. How about we just walk down here? I think this is my last shot at getting robbed. Let's go. <laughs> if I'm gonna get robbed, it's gonna happen now. Let's go, bro. Suicide bomber, I don't care. Anyone says something, just smile and say, What are you doing, mate? How are you? Hey, I'm lost. <laughs> I'm um, strikey talk now. Hey, how are ya? How are ya? Hello. There's uh that's the first time I got told, hey, how are ya? Turn off your camera. And she's shouting about something now. Like shouting about maybe, maybe um, shouting to indicate to people, hey, tell him to turn the camera off. That's what I feel is happening behind me right now. My fists are in bomb mode. My fists are in clench bomb mode. <laughs> if I send someone on my back, they're getting knocked out. Yeah, that old time. I was clenching my fist, turn around with the biggest left hook. All right, that's the lane that I would assume that you would have tried to avoid at all costs. <laughs> that's him, brother. That's him. 
that's the start from this point here. This being the, the first worst point, and we walked the whole thing to the top to those basketball courts and back. At this point in time, I find this bottom area to be much worse. A lot more people, a lot more rowdy, prostitutes. The top looks sort of like empty. Maybe it was just because it's raining, but yeah. That's it, brother. That's it, everyone. El Raval. Let's hoge. Did I feel unsafe at any time during all of that? A little bit at the top and a little bit just then. It's always women that are the loudest because they know that their loud voice doesn't really gonna get him into altercations that often. Where if a man was making a loud voice, it's like they're fighting words, you know what I mean? So women are always the first to get loud and then they're gonna pull the I'm a female card. Um, but that's normal. S screeching women in the hood. But that's all it really come to. Even while that was happening, I was like looking around. None of the lads were concerned. None of the lads were really looking at me. But having said that, I still did feel like, especially when she was like shouting out, trying to row people up. I was ready, mate. I was ready with those hooks. Apart from that, yeah. But definitely can see how that is on Barcelona's most dangerous part. If you watch that in contrast to where I'm staying, or where my food show, where I'm doing it, which is across the road, in the other part of town, completely different. Yes, that is a ghetto. As much as you know, oh, I know a tougher place, I know a place that's way scarier than that. At the end of the day, that's a ghetto, mate. <laughs> Barcelona's most dangerous hood, El Raval. Laters.